Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What is a record, sports or otherwise, that will likely never be broken? The Lion King is the highest VHS sales of all time. On a similar note, Smash by the Offspring is the highest selling independent album of all time. Hans Hayes DNQ, DNF and DSQ in one F1 race. Did not qualify, did not finish and disqualified. He did not qualify because he was too slow, started anyway by sneaking his car in. Only when his gearbox failed after 10 laps was it realized that Heyer should not have been competing, whereupon he was disqualified. I love the idea of sneaking a car onto an F1 track. Peak our forward slash act like you belong. John Isner hit 113 aces in his 70-68 match at Wimbledon played over three days. That record will never be broken because Wimbledon changed their rules so they can't play that many games ever again. The Guardian's game-by-game -game report of that game remains the pinnacle of live sports reporting just slowly losing their damned mind over the course of three days. It was the first match the BBC commentator had worked on as well. Not a bad start. Wade Boggs drank 64 beers on a domestic flight. Rip Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs is very much alive. Wade Boggs would be rolling in his grave if he could read your comment right now. Andre the Giant drank every bottle of vodka on a 747, that's gotta be close. He also holds the record for most beers consumed in a single setting ever at 152. Passed out in the lobby so they just threw a sheet over him and set up cones. And by all accounts one of the nicest people you ever met. Rip Andre. You're pounding beers in heaven with Wade Boggs. C.Y. Young pitched 749 complete games in his career. The current active pitcher with the most complete games in his career is Adam Wainwright, who has pitched for 17 years and has 27 complete games total. Pitchers just don't pitch the whole game anymore, and Young's record will never come close to being touched. Edit. To put Young's record in further perspective relative to modern day pitchers, I looked up career complete game stats for all current MLB pitchers, and there are 124 pitchers total who have at least one complete game in their career, for a total of 505 collectively 244 less than CY Young alone pitched in his career. His total of 500 plus wins is equally untouchable. How about 315 losses? That's about 10 years of a current pitcher going each entire season without recording a single win. If you had a 20-year career you'd still have to lose 16 games a year, every year. No team would put up with that. Alex Adreskarili, Greco-Roman wrestler. 887 wins to 2 losses. Entered 9 world championships and never lost a bout in them. Imagine being one of the two guys who gets to say he beat him though. You definitely don't fight him again after that. He's the most dominant athlete of all time IMO. Also both of his two losses were by a single point, and up until his final match forward slash loss against Gardner no one had even scored a point on him in six to seven years. It'd basically be like if a pitcher threw a no-hitter every single game they pitched over a span of seven years. Glenn Hall played 502 consecutive games as an NHL goalie. Zero chance that will ever be broken. Goalies these days rarely play more than three-fourths of an 82-game season, let alone numerous seasons without a night off. Also, George is Vizier's 15 seasons straight of starts, more seasons than Hall but shorter seasons so Hall holds GP, only ending when he was literally dying. They forced him to leave when he was coughing blood at intermission, he was diagnosed with TB and he died months later. Okay, yeah, I guess the guy deserves a trophy named after him. The longest professional tennis match of all time, John Isner vs Nicholas Mayhut at Wimbledon 2010. It lasted 11 hours 5 minutes, spanning 3 days of play, with a final score of 6-4, 3-6, 6-7, 7-6, 70-68. 70-68. It was already nearly twice as long as the previous record holder. The reason it will likely never be broken is that every professional tournament except for one, Roland Garros, now has tiebreaker rules that limit the number of games that can be played in final sets. Although it's hypothetically possible at RG, clay court tennis is not at all conducive to the serve and volley style of play that led to the insanely long fifth set of Isname Hut. I was in high school at the time, and Wimbledon happens in July, so I was able to watch the whole thing. I played tennis and was interested in American players, so I literally watched every point live. Incredible experience.
Also, RG instituted a fifth set tiebreak mechanic this year, it's a 10-point super break. Roland Garros has a tiebreaker too now. All four Grand Slams now use a first to 10 points tiebreaker once it reaches 6 to 6 in the final set, starting from RG this year. Edit, I believe you still need to win by at least 2 points like in tiebreakers in any other set, which is still first to 7, with 2 point gap. Wayne Gretzky's career points The Gretzky brothers hold the record for the most combined career points for a pair of siblings. Brent Gretzky has 4 career points, Wayne has 2857. The six Sutter brothers have 2936 points combined and the pair that is the closest to the Gretzky's are the Sedis that recently hit the 2107 mark, while the Stasty trio earned 2169 points. Wayne Gretzky is called the Great One for a reason, there has never been or ever will be a better hockey player and it's not even close. In fact, the second player in career points is Jaromir Jagor with 1921 points. For those that aren't aware, the points stat in hockey is a combination of goals scored and assists. Gretzky had 894 career goals and 1963 assists. If you took away every goal he ever scored himself, he would still hold the record for most points. Does he still have more assists than anyone else has total points? Yes, he had 1963 assists, Jagor is second in points all time with 1921. The current record for the cannonball run, a drive from NY to La, is about 25.5 hours. It was set in May of 2020, and the drivers were able to make use of the lack of traffic due to the pandemic to break the record. Barring another similar world-changing event, traffic conditions will probably never be what they were when that record was set. Toma claims that they were able to leave Manhattan in just four and a half minutes. That's pretty impressive. That part will probably never be broken right. I mean how the fuck? Average speed, 109.4 miles per hour. Average. I'd say that's a pretty mean speed. The Voyager Golden Record is now in deep space and is extremely unlikely to ever come across anything which could break it before the end of humanity. Voyager, in case it's ever encountered by extraterrestrials, is carrying photos of life on Earth, greetings in 55 languages and a collection of music from Gregorian chants to Chuck Berry. Including Dark Was the Night, Cold Was the Ground by Twitty's blues man Blind Willie Johnson whose stepmother blinded him when he was seven by throwing lie in his, his eyes after his father had beat her for being with another man. He died, penniless, of pneumonia after sleeping bundled in wet newspapers in the ruins of his house that burned down. But his music just left the solar system. Josh Limer. Damn. Just damn. Such a rough life, and such an amazing achievement, and without ever knowing. I can see how people might find this story mostly tragic. But for me it helps remind me that if I choose to do what feels meaningful and positive and true to me, even if I never directly see or feel like I accomplished much, I almost definitely did make a positive impact on the world. Chuck Berry as humanity's last testament is something I'm strangely okay with. They sent the recording where Yoko Ono starts hollering. Max Verstappen being the youngest F1 driver to hit the grid, at age 17. He is the reason why there's now a minimum age requirement for F1 and their license. He's on his seventh season already and is one of the more experienced F1 drivers, so I always think that he's around 30 years old. But he's just 24. For comparison, Lewis Hamilton was 22 when he started in F1. To add to this, he will also probably stay the youngest driver to win a Formula 1 Grand Prix. Being only 18 years and 228 days old when he won the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix. Surprised no one mentioned the unlimited water speed record. The current unlimited record is 511.11 km per hour, 317.59 miles per hour, achieved by Australian Ken Wabai in the spirit of Australia in 1978. It hasn't been broken to this day due to how dangerous it is to go at those sort of speeds on the surface and plenty of people have passed away trying. Here's the wiki article for the boat which is kinda interesting. Holy shit. 85% fatality rate. I knew it was high, but not Yuri almost certainly going to die high. I don't know that passed away applies if you die in a rocket boat accident. It's a bit more hurtled into the afterlife than passing away. I'm an Australian, read about him in school. A quote from him afterwards was along the lines of I wanted to go fast, and I knew I was fast, if I knew I was that fast, I probably would have backed down. 
I will not do that again. He kept going fast, but he never pushed it that hard. Did everyone see that, because I will not be doing that again vibes. Oh I know this one. When I was a kid, we had a guess book of records lying around that we liked to browse in while bored. There was this one guy in it who held a record for most bikes eaten. No, you did read that right. He ground up a bike and slowly consumed it over I don't know how long a time. The record was accompanied by a note that no further records of bike eating would be accepted, as it was deemed too dangerous. The gooeyest book of world records stopped allowing most types of records if I recall. Basically anything that wasn't a particular feat or skill and that was just a stupid number of repetitions for a specific useless thing. X, most amount of hot dogs balanced on the nose in one minute, also anything overly dangerous that isn't dangerous because of the athleticism. Longest motorcycle jump is okay but number of lever fireworks I can fit in my mouth isn't. When you pick up in 2000 Z Gui's book of world records, you realize it really was their bread and butter. The amount of utterly useless and easily beatable records that existed just because someone went I will try to balance five hot dogs on my nose in under a minute. Who fucking cares? The Gies book also used to have records for fire-eating and sword-swallowing, both of which they discontinued for safety reasons. <laughs>